Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Beaver and today we are discussing whether or not your fermentation will turn into vinegar if you do not distill it within a couple of days after fermentation is complete. First up, we need to discuss one thing. Can your fermentation turn into vinegar? And the answer is yes. Absolutely, over a long enough period of time, your fermentation will turn into vinegar given the right set of circumstances or the right conditions for that acetobactivirus to infect your fermentation and convert your ethanol into acetic acid. Now before we get into how this whole process works of your fermentation turning into vinegar, let's quickly discuss one thing. There are multiple different ways of fermentation to take place or in other words there are multiple different types of fermentation. The one that we are all aware of is our Saccharomyces or alcoholic fermentation where we use a strain of yeast to consume the sugar and convert it into alcohol. Yes, there are a couple of byproducts including CO2. Now keep CO2 in mind because it's very important for you to prevent your Acetobacter virus to infect your fermentation. I'm not going to talk about all the different types of fermentations out there. We as distillers only need to be focused on three of them or when we start out thinking about the different types of fermentations, those three are important. Number one, alcoholic fermentation. Of course, we want to create alcohol to distill. The next one is lactic acid fermentation. Now this is the process in which yogurt and cheese is made. Now if you want to know more about lactic acid fermentation, hit that subscribe button down below and ring the little bell icon because there's an interesting video coming up on the channel where we're going to be using live culture yogurt to improve the flavor profile of our fermentation before distillation so we can get some nice funky flavors. So yes, those two we can use quite comfortably during distillation. The third one we don't really want during our fermentation and that is acetic acid fermentation or the process in which vinegar is created. Now the acetic acid fermentation or acetic fermentation that converts ethanol into your vinegar or acetic acid is quite a simple fermentation, but it needs three very important things for it to be able to convert your ethanol in your fermentation into acetic acid. The first thing it needs is, of course, the acetobacter virus. Or the acetobacter organism it's not really a virus so yeah but it needs the acetic acetobacter organism that consumes ethanol and converts it into acetic acid now much like yeast the acetobacter is everywhere it is in a wild form on fruit and grain so that's why it's important before you do any type of fermentation or you mash in or all that ensure that your grains are nicely washed or if you're gonna be doing a grain fermentation like a whiskey, keep it at a nice rolling boil for about 10 to 20 minutes just to ensure that all those viruses or any unwanted bacteria is killed off and doesn't end up in your fermenter. Now, when it comes to fruit, yes, you do not really wanna boil your fruit because that will change the flavor profile from nice fresh fruit to a boiled version of the fruit or a cooked version. You can use some no rinse sanitizer just to rinse your fruits beforehand or just give them a nice scrub in the basin just to get off any of the nasties that you don't want to end up in your fermentation. Now the next thing your acetobacter organism needs to thrive with in your fermentation is ethanol. Now the ethanol percentage or the ethanol range that the acetobacter infection can work in is a 6 to 12 percent range now if those numbers sound familiar it is exactly the numbers we as home distillers firm into so we can have an efficient distillation now anything below six percent you're going to struggle to get a good quality product out of but above six percent up to about 12 percent you're in the ballpark for fermentation that you want to use during distillation that is exactly the number that acetobacter needs to convert ethanol into your acetic acid. Two of the conditions we have in our fermenter 
ready to go for the Acetobacter to take over. We have the Acetobacter available in the wild form that can infect our fermentation at any point. And then the next thing we have is alcohol in buttloads in our fermenter for the Acetobacter to take over. But lucky for us, the third thing that the Acetobacter needs for it to convert your ethanol into a acetic acid or into vinegar is oxygen. And now that's why it's important that you do not allow any oxygen to get into your fermenter once fermentation is finished or even after fermentation has started kicking off. The moment you allow oxygen to take hold of your fermentation that Acetobacter virus can take over and start converting your ethanol into vinegar. Now lucky for us that byproduct that I spoke about CO2, this gives a nice little cap on top of your fermentation to ensure that uh, oxygen can't get in. Now once fermentation is done, make sure you have a nice airtight seal on top of your fermenters. I somehow use a little bit of sticky tape over the top of the hole to ensure that none of the CO2 can escape and no oxygen can get in. And the next thing I do is when I do a fruit wash and the fruit cap doesn't settle down to the bottom of the fermenter, I ensure that I rack off into secondary and do it so I don't get any oxygen in there. So follow beer protocols there to ensure that when you rack off into your secondary, you do not allow oxygen to get into that environment. Now a couple of quick tips to prevent the Acetobacter from taking hold is number one, sanitization. Now I'm not talking beer level sanitization where you wash and clean everything with star sand and then get it into your fermenter and everything that touches your fermentation needs to be sanitized. No, all I mean is something looks dirty, clean it and get yourself some no rinse sanitizer and just spray down everything as you go and this will greatly reduce the risk of getting an Acetobacter infection and turning your wanted fermentation into an acidic acid fermentation and turning it all into vinegar. The next thing that you can do is to ensure, like I said, no oxygen gets into your fermentation after it kicks off or up until the point when you want to distill it. And the last thing you can do is to ensure that if you have anything that forms a cap, get it off the cap as soon as possible because if you leave it, a pellicle will form on top of that cap where it is exposed to oxygen and the CO2 has escaped off of it and right on top there is where your fermentation or your acetic acid fermentation will take place. It will form a gel layer much like the layer in the bottom of a kombucha that will turn your fermentation into vinegar. So that's one of the telltale signs. Now that brings me to a couple of questions that was asked over on the emails. How do I know that an acetic bacter infection has started. First of all, smell and taste. If you smell sour milk, it has a completely different smell to what you would smell if you stick your nose into a bowl of vinegar. So get your nose in there and smell. If you smell vinegar, you more than likely have an acetic, Acetobacter infection. The next thing you can do is you can test your pH. If your pH starts dropping rapidly, yes, you might have an Acetobacter infection. Do not do this while fermentation is happening. Your pH will go up and down while fermentation is happening. I'm talking about when fermentation is finished. The next question that was asked was how long does it take once the Acetobacter organism gets into your fermentation, how long does it take to actually convert that ethanol into vinegar? Now much like our fermentation where we convert sugar into alcohol, there is no clear cut answer on how long it will take for that Acetobacter to actually convert all of the ethanol into vinegar. But the standard out there is about 40 days for a 6% ABV wash to be converted into full acetic acid. That means roughly 1% every week of ABV is lost to your Acetobacter once the infection takes place. And this is without active oxygenization. So if you're going to actively oxygenate and you want to make vinegar, yes, the process can be sped up. But without any outside interference, just a little bit of uh, oxygen to get that process started will take roughly about 40 days. 
Now for those that stuck around this far and have yet to like the comment section on fire with stories of them having fermentations that has been standing for weeks, months or even years without turning into vinegar, yes, the likelihood of it happening is extremely low. Now the Acetobacter needs a very specific environment in which it can start converting your ethanol into acetic acid. And with the fermentation as it stands, everything in it is preventing that from happening. So if you do not actively start adding oxygen into your fermentation by either mixing it up or transferring it into secondary and allowing oxygen to get into the fermentation, yes, the likelihood of, the likelihood of it happening is extremely low. Now, if you stuck around this far, thank you very much. And remember to hit that subscribe button so you do not miss the lactic acid video that's coming up very soon on the channel. And thank you very much for watching. Have a lack of day.